Welcome to Movie Life Crisis. Join us as we watch the best movies from 30 years ago. I've been down here too long. It's time for me to ascend. From the sewers of Gotham, a new villain emerges. Man. So I crash! He sold tortillas on the corner. <laughs> From the rooftops of Gotham, the perfect enemy comes uh. to life. <laughs> I am Catwoman. Hear me roar. Yeah. The only one who can save this city is a creature of the night. Hey, stud. I thought we had something together. We do. Above Gotham looms its greatest hero. That's the trailer. Wow. That's it. Wow. They don't say the name of the movie. They don't say the name of any of the people. That's where that's the official trailer. That's where it ends. Dude, there is no way people don't know who Batman is. <laughs> Even in the year that we're talking about, there's no way they don't know. No, no, they they know. Movie Life Crisis season 2 episode 9 Batman Returns. So 9. It's awesome. It is Batman Returns, right? I keep thinking Batman Begins, but that's the Christopher Nolan yeah, it's uh, Batman Returns for Christian shit. Christian Bale. Yeah, right, Batman I like, Returns. I'm so ex- Batman's my favorite superhero, and um, I, I'm really excited we did this movie. Batman's great. I, I didn't. We weren't gonna do this movie because it was a sequel, and we we kind of had said like, hey, maybe we won't do sequels if we didn't get to do the first part because it might be weird to come in in the middle. Right. But this is the third biggest movie of 1992, and we're like, ah, hell with it. Let's do it. It's a fun movie. We. We liked, and also it's 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 kind of a standalone. It didn't really pick up where the other one left off. I didn't remember it well enough to know that, but that's totally right. true. It doesn't. You didn't need to see the first one to know what's going on in this one right. for sure. Absolutely. The only thing that I think when I hear that trailer is Danny Elfman's score is so freaking good. It's the first thing I wrote down was, oh my goodness, this score is it's fantastic. so good. So did he come up with the dun 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 dun, dun like that whole Batman? theme he's the guy who wrote that or uh, he must have because he scored the first one too right, and i think right, that's right. where that all the like batman like motifs that came back in this one i think that's where they came from yeah and like all of the um like the schumacher movies the ones after this with val kilmer and yeah. george clooney they george use clooney. the same they use that same song it was in the uh animated series like that's this that's awesome yeah it's iconic it, it, it was so good that i didn't even have to look up who did it i just heard it and i was like man this score is phenomenal i'm like that's Danny Elfman. I, yeah. I know that's Danny Elfman. You de- yeah, you can definitely tell. Plus, it's Tim Burton. They work a lot together. Plus, it's Tim Burton. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but anyway, season two, episode nine, Batman Returns. I'm JT alongside Jeff, Movie Life Crisis, talking about movies that came out 30 years ago. And this is the one of the biggest ones from 1992, Batman Batman Begins. Um, returns. Returns, man. Batman, Batman Returns. Begins. Batman no. Returns. Batman Batman Adjectives. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks. I'm going to do that like five more times. That's nah, all right. So, hey, real fast, when you said 30 years ago, it reminds me, uh, when I'm talking about the podcast with people, they go, oh, cool, what's your podcast about? And I'm always like, ah, oh, damn, now i got to explain this. I'm like, yeah, we do movies that are like 30 years old, and but only 30 years old, because it makes it sound like, yeah, we just pick yeah, yeah. old movies from the 90s. Yeah. But we're picking yeah. only movies from literally 30 years ago, 1992. Yes. And I and every year we change the year. So exactly thirty years old. Right. I don't I keep saying it that way and then they give me the funny look and then I have to explain it. I don't know if you have a better way to say it or you just explain it to the same way. I usually like mention the year nineteen ninety two. I go like, Yeah, we do movies that are thirty years old. Like so like we're doing nineteen ninety two right now and yeah. the next year we'll do nineteen ninety three. Yeah. I thought you were going to say like, yeah, we do movies that are 30 years old. And they go, oh, cool. You should do Shaft and Jaws. And you're like, no, no, not the 70s, the 90s. That yeah. was 30 years ago. Yeah. 30 years ago was definitely 1981. <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah. I, I usually mention the year. I go, yeah, we're doing 92 right now. We did 91 last year for season one. 
And then, like, I, I don't, dude, I don't see anybody. No, I'm not having this conversation. I go to my house. I go to the gym. Dude, I have this conversation like three times a week. Good. Yeah, I mean, it's Tell great. the people. Get, the people are getting out there. I want to be the number one podcast in Ponchatoula, Louisiana. I think we're close. Uh, we got, there's more <laughs> than one? I don't, so this is the thing, too. Like, I don't, you know how I am when people are like, oh, you did so well. I'm like, all right, thanks. I don't, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, so even when I want to say, like, yeah, I make a podcast, I'm never like, oh, my God, you should listen to my podcast. It's always yeah. just like, yeah, and I do this podcast thing with my friend. And uh, and I'm trying to, like, it's like a throwaway <laughs> thing. And they're like, oh, what now? A podcast? What's it on? I love podcasts. Do you do it about uh, killing people and finding who the killer was? I'm like, yeah, sort is of. Is true crime? <laughs> yes. Yes, we do. S- sort of. That's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah, I'm getting like the word that. out. One uh, tiny. That's a point. grassroots movement. Hello, yeah. welcome, Jeff's friends. <laughs> I didn't say they were friends. <laughs> <laughs> if they're listening to the podcast, they're friends now. Yeah, yeah, we don't have any housekeeping for this one. We didn't get any new reviews. Uh, if you want to leave us a review, we'll probably read it on the episode if it's yeah, good. Yeah, definitely do so, that. Definitely do that. Uh, but Jeff's going to do a little uh, Where in the World is Movie Life Crisis. He's tracking all the locations where people have listened from, and he's going to, every couple episodes, just update us with some of the cool spots. Right, right. So uh, what I was going to talk about today was um, it's really weird to me um, that we have uh, people that listen in, in uh, India. Yeah. There is somebody or some, uh, more than some one somebody, uh, that listens in Mumbai, India, to every single episode. They've listened to every episode. They always download it on the very first day. That's awesome. Like, That's amazing. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I've met people from Mumbai, but I don't know anybody that lives there now. Yeah. And that's really cool. Um, there's also uh, somebody that's recently started listening in New Delhi. Nice. That listens, that listens to the last three podcasts. And uh, Aminabad, there's uh, uh, one of my students is actually from there. Uh, and he sent it back home to his family because he has cousins that are actually my age. Uh, and they all love those movies. Nice. So, yeah. So all of those places in India, we've been blowing up, I guess. I Taking know. off. Yeah, yeah. We got like five, six Indian listeners and like 999 million, 999,000, 994 Indians to go. Right. The, no, th- there really is. Uh, there's way more than five. Uh, it's all over. That's amazing. It's all over India. There's like seven or eight different big cities and then a bunch of smaller towns where people are listening. But in Mumbai and New Delhi uh, and Aminabad, those those cities there, there's like multiple people listening every single episode. So shout out to the people in India. It's awesome. Yeah, what up, India? Yeah. Thanks for listening. Yeah, it's, it's freaking sweet. We're here with Batman Returns. Batman begins to return. <laughs> Batman starts the process of returning forever. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but first, we got uh, name that tune, dude. I'm so I'm so incredibly excited about this one. I, I've been waiting to talk to you about it. Uh, are you kidding me? Turn it off. Turn it off. Turn it. Off. Scoop of vanilla, scoop of chocolate. Don't waste my time. That's Charles and Eddie. Would I lie to you? Would I lie to you? Would I lie to you, baby? Would I lie to you? Oh yeah. I had totally forgotten that song exists, and I heard it, and I was so happy. I was dancing around my living room with my laptop volume to 100. Dude, uh, the, oh, yeah, that part. Yeah. Biggin used to kill that. <laughs> that He would wait they for just that They do it in every chorus. Every time. They never miss it. Every I time. I love that. Um, yeah, that they have videos for that, and those people are not what you think they look like. They're not at all. Dude, no, here's the thing. Charles and Eddie... That song is number 90 in 1992. I had completely forgotten it existed. I automatically put it on like five playlists, so I'll never forget again. <laughs> but the YouTube video from their, like Charles and Eddie Vivo, like their official music video. Yeah. Guess how many views it has? No idea. 55 million. Jeez. Guess how much the second most popular video on their channel has? Six. <laughs> Zero. They don't have any other videos. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think they had any other songs. That's awesome. Dude, it's amazing. It's but the song is super catchy. They had that their YouTube channel has one video and that video has 55 million views. That mean so I looked this up because I was wondering. <laughs> it, uh, 1 million plays on YouTube if you have monetized the video is worth probably 2 to 3,000 dollars in ads, which means just that one video is worth about 150,000 dollars. Does that mean 
$150,000 total or $150,000 a year? Like, how's that work? Just total. I th- no, I think it's per, it's for plays. Okay, I got you. So, so every million plays is a couple thousand bucks in ads. Um, if you do the, like, YouTube, like, automatic pop-up ads that they place in there. Yeah, yeah. So you should, we should tell everybody to go listen to Charles and Eddie, Would I Lie to You? Give them another 25 cents. God, it's such a great song, man. <laughs> I, I just, It was another one that I was like, ah, how could I have forgotten? Yeah. Like, like Patti Smith and Don Henley. I was like, how right. could I have forgotten that song? So did you know it was Charles and Eddie? Did you know? No. No. Okay. No, I had no clue. I would have never gotten it. I'm still. If you ask me, like, like we're recording on Tuesday. If you ask me on Friday, I won't. Re- I won't be able to tell you the names. What? No. So I'll be like, it's Char- it was Charles and I don't know. You'll remember now. Now that we're talking about it, it's stuck. It's in there. No, I won't. I'll be like, it's Jeff the God of Biscuits. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, I use that so much when I talk about the Romans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, that was that was a softball right down the middle. I'm not surprised that you got it, but I wouldn't have been surprised if you had missed it. I'm sure people who were alive in 1992 who heard that were like, how the hell did Jeff know who those people were? No way. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that song for sure, right? Everybody knows that song, I would hope. At number 90 on the year. Yeah, maybe. All right. Batman Begins to Return Forever. Give us a synopsis. <laughs> <laughs> when Batman deals with a deformed man calling himself the Penguin, wreaking havoc across Gotham with the help of a cruel businessman, a female employee of the latter becomes Catwoman with her own vendetta. Dun, dun, dun. Dude, you know that Penguin in the comics was not deformed. Um, Tim Burton made him deformed. He was just like a, he just like wore a top hat and a monocle. He was rich. Yeah, super, super good businessman. Right. He was, um, right. Uh, what's that guy's name that... Uh, that got put in jail, but then got pardoned by Trump, and he looks just like the Penguin. He wears <laughs> right. the round glasses, and he's got the <laughs> cigarette holder thing. Roger Stone. Yes. Roger Stone. Roger Stone. Roger Stone. Yes, exactly. But yeah, but Tim Burton was like, Tim Burton was like, no, let's give him flippers, and let's make him kind of football shaped, and uh, and let's let's make his nose really pointy and his teeth really sharp. Yeah, make his whole face look uh, avian. And now the comics that they do draw him to look like Danny DeVito did in this movie, but before that, he just was like a businessman. Yeah, he definitely was. And Penguin was just his crime name. Right. That's um, I like either one, but I definitely like the Danny DeVito. I like how they all went that route after that. Yeah. Budget for this movie was about $80 million. It made $267 million. Uh, this lot. is the third biggest movie in 1992. Yeah. Did you see what the – it hit a record for the first three days, that first weekend? Yeah. 40, $47.7 million on the first weekend. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a big open. That was a record that uh, was beaten by Jurassic Park the next year. Nice. Yeah, I couldn't. I, I remembered this being a big movie, and when I saw it, I was watching. And I was like, God, this is. There's a lot of people in this. It wasn't great. I didn't love it, but I, I, I could definitely. I was like, dude, this movie was huge, and it still is pretty well reviewed. But as I was watching, I was like, this is not as good as I remembered. Yeah, there's definitely things I didn't like about it, but um, I don't know if it's a the the whole Tim Burton thing, like that whole uh, the way he does stuff. Man, I don't. It just makes me want to watch. It's like I don't know art. I don't know how to explain it. Like, yeah, Tim Burton's got a very sp- like specific directorial style. Like, he, if he didn't put his name on the movie, you wouldn't be confused about who was whose vision that was. No, exactly. Like, you look at uh, Beetlejuice and these two Batman movies, and um, you know Edward Scissorhands, and you look at all those, and you're like, damn, that's all the same dude. You can totally tell. Yeah, you absolutely can. Which I like. All right, awards. Do you find some awards? Yeah, I do. Uh, dude, I, I got some awards. So Danny Elfman obviously won the the BMI Film uh, Best Film Music Award. Uh, in the Saturn Awards, they won uh, Best Makeup for Danny DeVito, but they were nominated for a ton of stuff. So they were nominated for visual effects and makeup, but they didn't win uh, for the Academy Awards. Uh, the MTV Movie Awards brought back the most desirable female, <laughs> as if uh, we needed to degrade Michelle Pfeiffer anymore. Uh, Best Kiss, they had that also. That was Michelle Pfeiffer and Michael Keaton. They were nominated and did win. And uh, Best Villain, uh, Danny DeVito, but he didn't win either. Uh, But they were nominated for a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, a ton of nominations. Dude, like the Michelle Pfeiffer thing, the best, what was it, most attractive female or whatever? Most desirable. Most desirable female. Which for some reason sounds grosser than most attractive, doesn't it? It does. It does sound grosser. I wish I could say that was a problem in the 90s and not anymore. But like, so one of the things I love to do when I go see a comic book movie is I'll come home, my wife goes to bed and I pull up Wikipedia and read about the comic characters. 
Because it's like, hey, in this era, they could do this, and this person drew them, and they and it went out this way, and then they rebooted them, and then there was a parallel universe. Like, I don't know why, but I just love to do that. Right. And so, like, one of my favorite parts of the Wikipedia entries on comic book characters, it talks about their powers. It's like, oh, Batman is super strong. He's brilliant. He's a detective. He's yeah. rich as can be. And, like, Catwoman does not have a section on powers. She has instead a section on romantic partners. Of course she does. Like, this is on Wikipedia 20 minutes ago. Like, dude, can we, she's a superhero or a superheroine. Can she not, she clearly can kick some ass. Why Why does she not have a section on powers? Does she have any powers? I'm, I'm wondering. See, like, Batman, I wouldn't even consider Dude, power. Penguin has powers. Penguin's Wikipedia entry has a section on his powers. What's his power? I don't get it. Well, he's rich, uh, <laughs> and he's a good fighter. Like, that's what the section says. And it says, like, depending on who is in charge of the comics, sometimes Batman can flatten him with one punch, and sometimes Penguin can fight him to a standstill. But he has a section, even though it says, like, yeah, sometimes he can fight, sometimes he can't. And Catwoman does not have it. But if you look at, like, Marvel heroes, if you look at Black Widow, she has a section on powers. Like, oh, she's a gymnast. She can do expert yeah. tactician, good with weapons. But Catwoman, yeah. for whatever reason, who's a great villain yeah. or anti-hero, doesn't and, have one. I was going to say anti-hero, yeah. Yeah. Well, she's also has a lot of you know partners too. Yes, this, she has her section on romantic partners. Anyway, a lot of award nominations, couple wins. Danny Elfman, well deserved. Uh, sequel spinoffs, yeah, uh, nine billion. The Tim Burton Joel Schumacher ones, which is like the Batman, Batman Returns, Batman yeah. Forever, and Batman and Robin. All of those are kind of in the same uh, universe. They're in this, yeah, they're kind of in the same timeline. They, they, we we have three different Batmen. But we have the same Alfred throughout all of them, and like in, in like this the same uni- I think the same universe, same like Commissioner Gordon too. Right, Commissioner Gordon and uh, same Alfred. Yeah, I like that Alfred too. He's good. Yeah, me too. Yeah, there's a bunch of spinoffs. We all know how many Batman. That, dude, on Plex, I have like I look. <laughs> there's it's like, so many. It's like 43 Batman. <laughs> there's so many movie slash cartoon movies. It's all, dude, I love all of them. And I haven't seen a lot of the animated ones. I'm hoping as my uh, kid gets bigger, we'll start watching a lot of those. Like. In cartoon form. You're going to really like them, too. They're good. Well acted. Um, Do you remember when you first saw this? Dude, for the life of me, it has eluded me to when I saw this first. Um, I'm like 99% sure it wasn't in the theater. This is probably one of those HBO things where you, like I recorded it off a TV on a VCR, which is, I realized the kids at that I teach are 18 and don't, they know what a VCR is kind of, but they don't realize what goes into it. They're like, hold on. You can just like put a thing and tape what's on TV. It's like, yeah, yeah. But you have to like be there to press record or set a timer and have it on that channel. And then it would do it. And uh, they're like, I don't, I don't get it. I was like, it's like, so you can record once one program and watch another program. (laughs) So uh, I don't even need a TV to record. record. (laughs) Well, how do I watch it? Shut up. Just shut up. He doesn't get it. He'll never get it. It's been four hours. The cows could tape something by now. Uh, they really, they they didn't understand. They knew you could watch movies, but they didn't yeah. know you could record them. You could record it at different qualities to get longer times out of the tape. Yeah, that's crazy. We're deleting all this. No one cares about this. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it in. Uh, all right, yeah, so where'd you see it first? I have no, honestly, no recollection at all of this movie as a child. I know I saw it because I saw all of these Tim Burton, Joel Schumacher uh, yeah. Batman movies. I remember the first one that came out in 89. I saw that one a bunch, but this one I must not have seen very many times because I, did, uh, I didn't remember hardly any of it. Like Christopher Walken was in it. I was like, oh shit, Christopher Walken. I had yeah. no idea. Yeah, I didn't um, I didn't actually remember him either. And when I saw him, I, I remembered that. Like I knew Michelle Pfeiffer was Catwoman, but like my wife was like, don't you have to watch Batman for the podcast? I was like, yeah, yeah, we'll watch it later on tonight. She's like, which Batman is it? I'm like, what's the second Tim Burton Batman? Michael Keaton's still Batman. Michelle Pfeiffer's Catwoman. Danny DeVito's Penguin. She's like, "What happens?" I was like, "I don't know." Batman wins. I, I, can't, I can't remember. <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't know anything else. Yeah, agreed. I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't know either. Uh, all right. How'd you rate it? One to ten. How many chimney dogs? All right. So seven's off the table. So I went. I went with eight. I liked it. Eight out of ten. I'm five and a half. Five and a half. Wow. Yeah. I just I watched the whole thing and I, I was I was kind of confused. I was like, "Man, this doesn't. It's not very good." There's not a lot of action. There's not a lot of character. Yeah. Like I kept waiting for stuff to happen. Like at one point I just like, 
because I rented it on Amazon. And if you, and when people are on screen with Amazon, if you pause it, it tells you who they are. Right. And so right. I'll do that when they're like big crowd shots to see if I, if it'll tell me who the actors are. Yeah. And at one point I was like, we're 45 minutes into this and like Batman hasn't fought anyone. And like, I don't, the villains have, they're just talking. I don't get, I don't even know what they're, I don't even know what they're setting up. Yeah. There's a bunch of stuff about like that part of it, but I, um, I, I kind of liked it. I'll definitely watch it again. Yeah. I, I, I just didn't, I was like, and like Wendy was watching it with me and she fell asleep. And at the end <laughs> she was like, did it get better? I was like, not really. I don't know. Did you not like the, um, like stupid superhero quips and stuff like that? Do you not like, I, I mean, I didn't think they were very good. I don't mind that. Yeah. I like just the, like all the origin stories. Like, I don't know. We can get into it. Let's do best. Yeah. And then we'll do, we'll do yeah, worst. Yeah. We'll talk about it. Okay. Good. Um, best, best scenes. You get started. I only have one. You <laughs> All right, I found three that I liked. All right. Um, one is, uh, the first one is when uh, Penguin is driving the Batmobile. Yeah. Because it's so goofy. And he's so got goofy. that, like, um, freaking the nickel uh, ride outside of Kmart <laughs> style freaking <laughs> yeah. Batmobile. That's like a mock-up of that. I really, for some reason, uh, the whole t- I forgot about that part. Uh, and I remember him, as soon as he started doing it, I remembered a whole bunch of stuff, like him rocking back and forth when he's riding yeah. in it and like talking to the talking through the screen to Batman, which is weird because he like has a CD burner inside the Batmobile. Like he put a CD in and... Yeah, and recorded what he was saying. Recorded the thing, yeah. And I was also wondering too, I was like, is, is the Penguin FaceTiming Batman inside of his Batmobile in 1992? Yes. That's pretty advanced even for Batman. Before that, though, in the first one, I remember Alfred talking to him on the screen. Yeah, well, but that made more sense to me because, like, if he's got the technology in the Batmobile, he also put it in the mansion. But, like, Penguin, like, how does he have the phone number or the whatever? Well, how'd they even get into the Batmobile? Like, those, yeah, I don't know. those, those acrobat clowns were smart enough to come up with a remote that takes the armor off of the Batmobile? Yeah, they broke... They they broke Bruce Wayne's Batmobile like armor encryption and then hacked it with a bunch of stuff that they looked like they made in Santa's workshop. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then the part where Bruce, uh, I'm Bruce Wayne, when uh, Batman punches through the floorboard and then reaches yeah. for the uh, the antenna thing, that was a little ridiculous. But the whole thing was ridiculous, uh, and I kind of liked it. He went all uh, crazy. Yeah. The, I think the scene that I liked was a continuation of that same scene because I just had like the one part that I got like actually pretty excited about. I was like, ah, oh, that was awesome. Was I think it was at the tail end of that scene where he's like running from the cops in the Batmobile. And instead of before he drives through the alley, he just like just like blows up the sides of the Batmobile and then comes out in a really skinny Batmobile in the middle. Yeah, super, super skinny. But that, but then I started thinking like, like, is that just means like pieces of the Batmobile are just sitting around in an alley? Yeah. Well, I think one of the reasons I liked it is because in the um, Christopher Nolan, Christian Bale Batman, yeah. like he has his like, he has the Batmobile motorcycle that like explodes out of the actual like big Humvee Batmobile. Right. Yeah. But it's the same thing. Like he launches out and he just leaves like 80% of it like on the side of the road. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, but then uh, doesn't Alfred talk about it? He's like, don't we need to fix the Batmobile? We can't take it to Joe's body shop. <laughs> so like, I guess they, they uh, yeah. talk about how they leave it behind. Um, but yeah, I don't, that's that part for some reason it like, um, it came back to me all at one time and I remember him riding yeah. on that little. Well, I like that. I really like that like concept as like someone hijacks the Batmobile while he's in it and is re- remote driving it and like wrecking pedestrians and it, like to frame Batman. I think that's a cool plot device. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, it worked. I liked it. That This whole thing was so corny. It was hard for me. Like, I, I couldn't, I was like, man, if it, I think this would be a really good cartoon Batman episode, but like live action, I just, I don't know. I couldn't, I couldn't get into it. It's a comic book, man. It's supposed to be a little out there. It is. And it might just be that I've seen the like, uh, Christian Bale, Christopher Nolan, like gritty, real Batman movies real, a lot more, a lot more right. recently. That's like this, like kind of cartoony Batman. It's harder for me to like reconcile. Yeah. I'm with you. So your your one scene is right after that when he changes to the yeah when he skinny. when he has the skinny Batmobile and he drives through the skinny alleyway and then the other cars try to follow him what, what yeah. the hell is that they always do that they always do that stupid cops uh, all right well then I I have a couple other ones yeah what else all right so you know when they're at the masquerade ball uh, yes. when um, neither of them are wearing masks neither uh, yeah. Bruce or Selena are wearing masks <laughs> even though they wear masks all the time for their second secret identities yeah yeah they're wearing masks all the time so they don't have to now <laughs> um, which by the way the mayor uh, has uh, a Coliseum a mask yeah. that looks like the Coliseum 
and in his back is a big knife of sword in his back. So I wonder if he's supposed to be Caesar. I think he's supposed to be Caesar. That's ridiculous because Caesar wasn't around when the Colosseum was built. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I mean, it's true, but I'm saying that. Just kidding. Yeah, so, yeah. All right. So at the masquerade ball, uh, they find each other. Uh, she asks what he's doing there, and he's like, I'm here to see you. And she like kind of smiles, and she's like, yeah, that's the right answer. Uh, but they have like um, – it's like growing past just flirting like they've been doing. Yeah. Um, and they realize they're both doing the thing and they say the mistletoe line and yeah. then he realizes it. And then they're like, Oh my God, should we start fighting? And I was yeah. like, I like how that realization, that uh, emotional moment, maybe um, yeah. I like that. I, I thought that was good. Um, I don't know. You, you didn't, you said in the beginning of this, you didn't think there was enough character development. I felt like there was a lot in this compared to like Captain Ron. It felt like they did a lot of, uh, like Michelle Pfeiffer showed like how she's trying to work her way up to being, uh, better in the company or whatever. And she, you know, she tries to say something in a meeting and she shouldn't have, and she gets down on herself and then she comes home and she's like, honey, I'm home. Oh wait, that's right. I'm not married. And like, uh, all of that stuff, like it shows how like sad her life is and how she turns it around. It's like a uh, an apostrophe moment, if you will, an epiphany. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. I like uh, I liked that whole masquerade thing when they both figured they, uh, it out. There was a lot of character development compared to Captain Ron. Yes, compared I to don't, Captain Ron. I don't know. That's that the bar. That- no, that's the bar we're setting right now. I think we would call that damning with faint praise. <laughs> yes, they did more than Captain Ron. No, you're right. I like that scene. That was a cool, I think that was a cool reveal because they, they're fighting as Batman and Catwoman and they have this thing about their mistletoe. Mistletoe is deadly. A kiss can be deadlier. It's not a great right. line. It's actually pretty stupid. Yeah, no, it's but really then they bad. say then they say it again at the masquerade and they're, you know, when they're their regular selves and they both realize that like, Oh shit, you're Batman, you're Catwoman. And she's like, do we have to fight again? And he's like, I hope not. Yeah. Like that was, that was a cool moment. That was a good, yeah. that was a good reveal. That was a good callback to do that. What, what would be a better line than that? It's a Christmas movie. You got to talk about mistletoe, right? It, I mean, you don't have to, no, I'm sure there's a million better lines than that. Yeah. That like, I think that line's pretty corny, but that's a cool, that's a cool way yeah. to do it. Yeah, like yeah. you know, you say because that's what happens all the time, right? We're like, oh, we're fighting, and we we say something to each other while we're fighting as superheroes, and then someone says the same thing later when we're not superheroes, and it's like, oh shit, you were the guy from the thing. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, me too. That's classic. Yeah, I like that. And dude, something about the way Michael Keaton delivers his lines. He he's another one of those guys who always like looks. He's like stammering, but I think it's on purpose, and he always looks like he's trying to come up with a. Like yeah. um, like a Mr. Mom, when he's just like, uh, can I have a half a pound of ham? She's like, honey ham, <laughs> smoked ham, black forest. And he's like, uh, yeah, uh, look, just um, give me give me like a pound of cheese, a Swiss cheese, American cheese. He's like, ah, yeah, uh, just like that whole stammering thing. Uh, he does that in this, and I really like it. He's definitely doing that on purpose. Michael yeah. Keaton is one of my favorite Batman. We'll talk yeah. about that later. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, in the studio... Uh, really like it was, I think it was, Dis- I think it was Touchstone through Disney really yeah. didn't want Tim Burton to cast Michael Keaton for the first one. Right. Like fought him really hard because he was a comic actor, actor at that point in time. Yeah. And, and Tim Burton was like, no, no, the point is not to have this like unbelievably jacked Batman slapping people around. It's to have this like normal sized person who mm-hmm. has this like real dark side. Right. Right. Which I actually think is a really smart approach, and Michael Keaton is freaking brilliant at it. Yeah, and then they didn't want him for the set for this one. Yeah, they didn't want him for the second one, and he's and he didn't want to do it unless you unless he had yeah, and more Tim money. Burton was like, no, he earned it. Like we made two hundred million dollars on the first one, he gets to come back. Right. Yeah, he kills it, and he did a great job. Yeah, uh, in a to me a pretty forgettable movie. Nah, man, killer. Uh, all right, so the third one, uh, third scene I had is the last scene, the fight scene at the end. Yeah, because uh, all of the main characters are there. So you have yeah. like the Penguin, the Batman, the Catwoman, Max Shrek, and they're all yeah. there. And it's uh, everything's coming together. And she's counting like right before she kills um, Christopher Walken. And she's yeah. counting how many people have killed her, which yeah. reminded me there used to be a, um, there was a Tales from the Crypt episode where this guy realized he had nine lives. So yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, so he would like do stuff that he knew he could come back from. So he like tried to rob a bank and he got shot and they, he woke up in the, in the, um, in the morgue. And like, yeah. uh, th- there's one where he's like, uh, he decides to go join a circus 
and they bury him alive. And then the next day they come back and dig him up and he's still there. So like, uh, he's in the coffin and that's where it starts. And he's thinking back to all the different times he died, just like she is. She's counting. She's like, all right, he killed me once. This person killed me once. This person killed me twice. Uh, and in that episode, he's being buried alive and he's under in the coffin and he's realizing this was his last life. Um, and that's like how it ends. But like this, she realizes she has two left. So she uses it to kill what's his nuts, which was yeah, cool too. One. Grabbing the, no, kills uh, Shrek and like grabs uh, grabs the power cord and like kisses him with the uh, taser. Is that what it's called? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the taser. Yeah, she like puts it up against her mouth. Dude, Tales from the Crypt, well, I couldn't watch that when we were kids. It was too scary. Just <laughs> the guy's face. No, that, that, that guy's scary. I watched them later on in life, like when I was like a teenager. That's when I really got into it. I watched a lot of them. Yeah, the last scene when they're all fighting. Um, yeah, I mean, that was fun. I was honestly, I couldn't, I was confused. Batman is trying to stop the Penguin, who's partnered with Max Shrek. Right. And, but then, like, Catwoman is also fighting Batman, but then also fighting Penguin and Max Shrek. Like, it seemed like there's there should have been some alliances there, but it seemed like everyone was fighting everyone else. I was like, this doesn't make sense. Well, let me tell you, let me say this. Um, my, and we'll talk, I guess we could have talked about it during the worst, but like my whole thing is the idea of Max Shrek, the super wealth, wealthy businessman didn't like, he was trying to steal electricity in the beginning or something and hoard it and then right. sell it back to people uh, when they needed it. Like that whole thing did he didn't need to be there. Like if they would have just made Penguin the guy trying to hoard the electricity, then like everybody could have been mad at Penguin. You know what I'm saying? Like there's no need for the Max Shrek character. No, and he's not in the comics. He was he was invented by the writer of this movie. Right. And it doesn't make any sense. Like his plan, like the way that you said it doesn't make sense, but you said it exactly right. It just doesn't make sense. Like he's like No, it doesn't. He's like, Oh, I want to build a power plant and everyone's and Bruce Wayne and the mayor are like, We have we have enough power. We don't need any more power. He's like, no, no, you can never have too much power. We need more power. And then he's like, it turns out his like evil plan is like, no, no, this thing I'm saying is a power plan is actually going to be a power storage, which first of all, there's no such thing. Right. You can't store power in yeah. like in a power plant type of thing. He's like, it'll be a giant capacitor. That's that doesn't, that doesn't right. work. Right. And then second of all, if the city already has enough power supply and you store it, Where's your customer? Who who's going to purchase it? Right, right. Like as and then he's, he's like, and then I'll pass it down to my son, who's Latimer from the program. I put him down too, and who's also you know a football player in Necessary Roughness. Necessary Roughness, it, yeah. Like your plan, like it's it made no sense at all as an no. evil plan. No, and, but also like he didn't need to be there. Like you're right. Like why? Like there were, he served no purpose in this film. Let the penguin have an evil plan, which right. he kind of did, which was like ruin everybody because he had an unhappy childhood. Right, right. And that's like, I don't, I just don't know why. Uh, and I, dude, I love, I, I love Christopher Walken, but I just, man, the whole I time I was just, he, he did a great job, but his character made no sense at all in this movie. I, yeah, I didn't understand why he was there because you could have made Peng- Penguin the guy that was doing all this, and that would be more, uh, a bigger reason for Batman to want to get him. Yeah. But the three best scenes are definitely the fight scene, Penguin driving the Batmobile, which was ridiculous, and the masquerade ball. Yeah, I'm with it. I have no, I have no qualms there. Uh, quotes? Yeah, uh, I got a few. Do you? I only, I only got one. So you go first. <laughs> uh, all right. So there's two um, that are j- I just put on there because I had wrote, wrote them down when I was taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> so the the whole Selena when she's like, "Honey, I'm home." Oh, I forgot. I'm not married. I like that <laughs> uh, because it shows like how her character is. And then yeah. she like listens to the answer machine like over yeah. like and that just sets up the whole thing. So the whole honey I'm home I forgot I'm not married. And then she does it again yeah. when she comes home after falling out of the window, which by the way, when he like pushes her out the window and there the, there's a part where he's like laughing and she's like, "Oh, I thought you were serious." He's like, <laughs> and then bam, he turns around and pushes her. Yeah. I ju- I jumped. That was that was like it got yeah. me. I wasn't ready. I forgot that whole thing happened and I was I did ready. too. Yeah. And then as she's falling through those awnings and her head's like snapping forward and they're showing that, uh, that was really cool. Uh, Tim Burton's messed up in the head and I really like it. Can you tell me how someone getting pushed out of a window turns them into a superhero? Because I didn't get it. No, no, there is no way to get it. That's that's the thing. So that's why I was asking, does Catwoman actually have powers or is she just a 
a super... So in the comics, she's a cat burglar, like Selena Kyle. And almost right. all of the comics, it, like right. she has some kind of like a hard childhood and she goes from there into being a cat burglar. And so her powers are like Black Widow's. It's like, oh, she's a top level gymnast. She's got amazing balance. She knows how to right. fight. She's super smart. Right. It, like an, Not superpowers, just powers. Well, I mean, Hawkeye doesn't have superpowers, but he's classified as like a peak level human. Like he could do stuff that really no one can do, but he's not. He's not a superhero. I hate Hawkeye, but carry on. I know. I, I agreed. But like Black Widow is the same thing. She, she's just, she's a human and Catwoman right. is a human, but she has right. powers. Like those two have powers. Right. There's no origin story of Catwoman where she falls out of a window, can then cats lick her body and then she wakes up. It's Catwoman. <laughs> that made, that was the weirdest thing. Yeah. It didn't make any sense to me either. I'm totally with you. I think I, the only thing, I, cause I was trying to go like, I'm get, maybe I think Tim Burton wants me to think that she fell out of the window that she didn't die, but she hit her head hard enough to basically like scramble her brain. Like she woke up, basically woke up with like a, a new personality. But she also knows how to fight with the new personality, which seems like a weird thing to have happened. And she can also die multiple times. That's that's right. the part I didn't like. She yeah, she has multiple. Uh, you know, I don't know. Dude, I don't dude a radioactive spider bit Spider Man, and now he has the Peter Tingle. So why can't <laughs> So why can't a cat bite her finger and she has nine lives? Maybe it was a special kind of cat. Dude, I mean, that's not like canon from the comics, but I, I could buy that. But dude, if you in any of the Spider-Man movies, when the spider bites Peter, there's always a bunch of shit on screen that's like flashes green around the spider and then like stuff pops up behind Peter's face where it's like radioactive something, something happened. Yeah. He wakes up feeling all tingling and he's like, oh man, that's spider bite. And there's a scene where he discovers his powers she just fell, woke up with cats on her, and then went home like as a superhero. Tim Burton does not need to spell it out for you. You're supposed to know. He's you know not, what else they he's didn't not do? Trying to spell. You know what else they didn't do? They didn't show. This is the only one of these movies that didn't show Bruce as a young boy. So why is it? Why is he Batman? What the hell? He's just a rich dude that lives in a cave. That's stupid. I don't understand it. He doesn't well, spell it out. Well, it's a sequel with the same character. I think we know where he came from. We've already seen his origin story. This is a standalone movie. I've never seen the other one. <laughs> I only watch movies from Movie Life Crisis, and I've never seen the first one. <laughs> Wait until our Patreon content gets back to 1989. Yeah, no, that's a good quote. Uh, oh, I forgot I'm not married. That's not bad. Yeah, and then when she comes back though, after like after the cat bites her, the radioactive cat bites right. her, and she becomes <laughs> and she becomes a superhero instead of a super whore, um, <laughs> then she comes home and she says, uh, "Hi, honey, I'm home." Oh, I yeah. forgot him. Like she she says it yeah, like, she like repeats a zombie. It. Yeah, I like it. She does it like uh, Phil Connors in the uh, in the cafe when he's repeating everyone's lines. <laughs> Got to hurry if we want to stay. Out of the weather. <laughs> Lake Titty Kaka. <laughs> What are the finger lakes? <laughs> what are the finger lakes? <laughs> and they're all he like takes clapping. a sip of the Jack Daniels out of the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> and they're clapping for him, all the old ladies. That's awesome. Uh, next year. I can't wait. Um, Cannot all right. Wait. Here's my favorite uh, quote from the movie. All right, good. Yeah, she put these little glove thingies on you. Our research tells us that voters like fingers. <laughs> uh, I like that whole scene. I like that part. It's dude, it's great. They're trying to they're trying to get Penguin to run for mayor, which in the comics he does want to he gets into politics a number of times. Yeah. And he's got like deformed flippers and his and his political consultants, uh, who is on my list of cameos, like, let's put these gloves on you. Our research shows us that voters like fingers. <laughs> yeah. And then the other guy, he's like, Not a lot of reflective surfaces down there in the sewer, huh? And they all start laughing. And then he says, It could be worse, my nose could be uh, gushing blood. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, what do you mean by that? And then rah, he bites him on the face, which is yes. weird, but I totally remember that all the time, too. I, I remember that, too. As soon as he said that, I was like, oh, this guy has no idea what's coming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do have a couple of questions. Um, how do psychopaths garner any votes for any political office? I don't like, know. Who would vote for a guy with like weird hair and makeup and a crazy shaped body that says awful things and constantly talks about putting the place he lives first, always claiming that he could make Gotham City like it used to be. He could make it great like again. Who would vote yeah. for that person? Not nearly as many people as would vote to, for the other person. But <laughs> when you get the Electoral College, you know. <laughs> No, dude, Penguin comes down his freaking wrought iron spiral staircase to meet his like tim team of campaign volunteers, and he's freaking eating a raw fish, <laughs> like going at it. Wearing because like that's a how, onesie. That's how Christopher Walken 
uh, who, who I really should call Great Value Doc Brown in this movie because of his hair. <laughs> That's how he lures him down with it. Just like hands him a freaking salmon and a big piece of paper, and he's like, hur, hur, hur. Yeah. and everyone's like clapping, like, "Yeah, there's our next mayor!" Woo! I don't. That's what I'm saying. Like, where? Like, I think that's how politics really goes, though. Everyone's like, "Whatever, this is the guy." That well, that is it. Down to like the lesser of two evils. Is that just what it is? <laughs> is it always that? Like, it's that in real <laughs> life, and it's that in movies. They're just trying. I don't. To be know, I don't even think that was satire. I think that was a like documentary. That's. A, <laughs> I just don't. I don't get it. Um, <laughs> The other, my other, another quote, I did put the, uh, my nose could be gushing blood. Uh, I put that as one of my quotes, but then also, uh, right there after that part, uh, there's like this bimbo that walks up and she's like, you're the coolest role model a young person could have. And he says, you're the hottest young person a role model could have. Like, I don't know why I was like, wow, that was, that was bad. I don't understand the sexual tension that the penguin has for everybody. Uh, yeah, I, my my wife texted me before we started recording. She was like, "Just make sure that you mention that Penguin was creepy enough without also being a sexual predator." Yeah, yeah. got it. We'll do. I totally agree. We didn't need that. We already know he's weird. And he walks upstairs, and what's he say when he sees a Catwoman sitting on his bed? <laughs> I don't even like saying says, it. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember. He's like, just like just the pussy I was looking for. Or something yeah, like that's that. <laughs> that's it. That's ridiculous. That's that's so bad. It's what are awful. they doing, dude? And I liked how they took Danny DeVito, who was already not Brad Pitt, and they're like, let's really <laughs> spend four hours of putting makeup and weird noses and fake teeth and flippers and making his body twice as wide as it already was, just so he's super super weird looking. But that was ingrained into my head. Like I totally remember what he looked like. Like yeah. I remember that onesie. Like all of like I remember all of that. I do too, man. That was freaking Tim Burton weird shit that I'll never forget. So weird, and I liked it a lot. Yeah. All right, last quote from me. Batman walks up to the penguin and he says, what do you want? And he, I like that uh, he doesn't do the gravelly, I know. I'm Batman trying to hide my voice, this, this voice. I'm glad he doesn't do that. Yeah. Uh, he says, what do you want? And the penguin says, ah, the direct approach. I admire that with a man with a, uh, that in a man with a mask. So he yeah. says it. I like that. Like that was a funny line. And then uh, that's right after Catwoman walks up, not walks up, flips up and then lands right in front of the department store and says meow. And then the thing blows up behind her. That whole, that whole little thing back and forth. I like that. Yeah. The radioactive cat bite taught her how to make stuff explode and use a whip and do flips. She just put paint inside the microwave, just like your boy, Steven Seagal. (laughs) Just straight out of Under Siege. Yeah. Uh, She watched Under Siege probably in this Batman universe and was like, shit, that's going to work perfectly. She probably listens to our podcast. And then she opened up a cabinet next to the microwaves and inside the cabinet was this big thing that was spray painted. It said gas. Gas. (laughs) And she just ripped the hose off. She's like, this is perfect. I'm so glad they ran this gas tank next to all these microwaves that I can fill with paint cans. <laughs> this is the thing, too. It's a cabinet that she opens. She doesn't open it up. She goes... No, she, she jams her hand through there like the freaking Terminator <laughs> and then rips the whole thing off, even though it's got a handle and was not locked. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, holy crap, that's not even locked. What is she doing? Uh, so it's she like, ri- It was like a freaking... Ki- it was like a cabinet for like a kitchen. Like if you went to get a drinking glass and instead of opening it, you smashed your hand through there and ripped the whole thing off. Oh man. And dude, the gas can that was in there was like, I'm going to fill up my lawnmower. It was like a red and yellow <laughs> gas can yeah. that had pipes going into it. That's yeah. weird, isn't it? Yeah. That's that's some Tim Burton stuff, man. Like the whole you could tell all the outdoor stuff is really on a sound stage and all the indoor stuff is sets. Like they didn't shoot yeah. in a single real location. It's right. all like Tim Burton's all wacky brain. And I'm going to talk about the uh, things for sure. I'm just nice. saying they 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 don't spell it out for you, but they did put gas on the side of a can <laughs> inside of that cabinet when they literally spelled it out. Uh, by the way, right before that too, when she's uh, fighting or she's in there trying to set up her bomb, uh, Steven Seagal bomb. Uh, yeah. There's two guys that are like shakily grabbing their pistols, and one of them who says something, "Get my pies out of the oven." No. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get my pies out of the oven. He like says something too. I don't know whether to shoot her or ask her out or some stupid crap yeah. like that. It's something bad, dude. And the, the other security guard was like, "Don't, don't kill us. We only make our take home is three hundred a week." No, yeah, he's like, "I my take home is less than three hundred. That's American dollars. Is that per week? 
I th- I'm j- he just said, he said, like, like you said, my take home is less than 300. And I was like, I guess that means $300 a week. So I'm like, so they make what? 60 bucks a day. So that they, they make like whatever, seven bucks an hour. That's, that's crap. I mean, that's what minimum wage is now. 30 years later, 300 bucks a week. That's pretty bad. So uh, yeah, I just, uh, I remembered him saying less than 300 and I wanted to ask you what you thought it was. I thought the week. only thing I could think of was that it was $300 a week. Yeah. I don't yeah. It's a weird way to say that. Like, yeah, but don't shoot me. My take home's 300. What? <laughs> it's like, I was like, did Jeff teach you how to play paper, rock, scissors? <laughs> rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> rock, paper, uh, scissors. Good old rock. Nothing beats that. <laughs> Poor predictable Bart. Always picks rock. Uh, that's, that's my last one. I just had the one quote. Um, characters, who's your first best character? Mine, uh, mine is uh, great value. Uh, <laughs> great value, Doc Brown, Christopher Doctor, Walken. Doctor Emmett Brown. Yeah, I didn't put him down. I didn't like his character. His character was think. was completely stupid. He, there was no need for him to be in this movie. But I really liked his performance. He seemed like the only person in the whole movie, other than Michael Keaton, who's always great. Right. Like Christopher Walken was like he was doing the right amount. Like he wasn't doing too much. Like Danny DeVito was doing way too much. I like, and like that. Michelle he, Pfeiffer was doing way too much. Christopher yeah, Walken wasn't they, doing too much. He was doing just the right amount. No, dude, they turned into the skid. That's what I like about it. They were feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, steer into the skid, Barbie. I did, I did read that uh, Batman, not Batman, Michael Keaton wanted to, he's like, there was a bunch of like monologues that Batman had, like speeches in the suit. And he's like, every time I'm in the suit, I want to talk the least amount that I can talk. Yeah. So he was like taking stuff out. So nice. he didn't do a lot because he feels like he doesn't need to do a lot. Danny DeVito, he's the bad guy, so he has to say what his plan is. He's the bad guy in a movie. But I don't mean like Michael Keaton didn't talk the right amount. I mean like when they acted, they didn't do too much with it. Like Danny DeVito did like Shakespeare in the Park where like <laughs> yeah. I'm all the way across, I'm far away. He's got to make big gestures so I can see what's <laughs> going on. But it's not like that. He's on yeah. a movie. It's He's giant. Right, right. Like that's like a really cartoonish like – acting choice but christopher walken i felt like was do, like he could do that i've seen christopher walken overact the shit out of stuff but i feel yeah. like he did the right amount in this role no i see i could see that yeah that whole um uh penguin uh when he's talking to the penguins at the end of the movie he's yeah. going way over the top yeah yeah he's going like and i don't i don't think danny devito like made that decision on his own i feel sure tim burton told him exactly how yeah, to do so it like, because tim more, burton has a vision that I will never understand because I don't have enough mushrooms. Yeah, I. Uh, but I like it, man. There's, I can't think of a Tim Burton movie that I wasn't like, oh, that was garbage. I'll never watch that again. I haven't watched anything that he's done in the last 20 years. You didn't like Beetle? What about Beetlejuice? Oh, you're saying well, no, like you I like his early stuff, movies. but I'm saying yeah. like when he started doing like Alice in Wonderland and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, all that. I was those like, are good. I'm a pass because I already know how that's going to go. And those movies have other versions that I already like. Yeah, that's good though. You should check. You should at least check out the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory one. Well, that's dude. You're right. He just it's not like he's doing a bad job. It's just not always my thing. Right, right. No, I'm with you. Like just like somebody can be like, hey, like Nickel Creek is really good. I'm like, I believe you, but I, I don't want to go with you to the show. Wait, Nickel Creek is good. Nickelback. Nickel is not. Creek is good. Nickelback is not good. I like Nickel Creek. That's the bluegrass people, right? Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, they're very good. I want to go to that show. I want to watch some people burn up the mandolin. Dude, you can't. You won't even come to Nashville to freaking do the podcast. Oh, the the shows in Nashville. Never mind. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, Christopher Walken. I, I liked his performance in here, even though his character makes no sense. Great value, Doc Brown. My very first uh, is um, the, one of the people that went over the top that you didn't like, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. Nice. I thought I thought she was um, hot, and I thought she was uh, really good at it. Um, Wait, did you did you think she was hot in the beginning when she had on glasses? You mean she's all that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. I did. Dude, that was in my worst. Like in the beginning, she's the secretary for Max Shrek, and she's got like f- like curly, like overly curly hair and glasses, yeah. wearing like a secretary pantsuit. I'm like, is this it? I'm like, it's 1992, Michelle Pfeiffer. You think we don't all know that she's hot underneath <laughs> yeah. those glasses? Who are you fooling, Tim Burton? This is the thing, too, though. Even with the glasses, kind of hot. Yeah, dude, 1992 Michelle Pfeiffer. There's no, there's no outfit you could put her in that she's not yeah. going to be hot. What about if she looks like, a, what about the Danny DeVito outfit, the penguin outfit? <laughs> maybe, I mean, she's not, maybe she's not hot in that. Yeah, let's, let's put these gloves on. Uh, research shows that voters <laughs> like fingers. Uh, dude, so wait, real fast. I did, uh, I wanted to know, like, um, 
like, uh, is that like uh, an outfit that she uh, wore? Was it hard to move in? Like, I started looking up stuff about that. Did you yeah. see some of the stuff about that? She was uh, in her uh, biography. She talks about how it was vacuum sealed once she got in it. So she would put it in, and they would literally <laughs> suck the air out. So she was like, it was so tight and so like form fitting that I would start to get lightheaded and pass out if it was on me for too long because I just couldn't feel my extremities all the time. And like, and she's in her, the, the hat part was so tight around her ears that uh, Tim Burton had to keep telling her to like, Hey, quiet down. You're screaming your dialogue. You don't need to yell. (laughs) Like she couldn't even hear herself. She was yelling so loud. And then like they were on a, her and her husband, David Kelly were on a a talk show and they were talking, like joking. Hey, did she ever put the Catwoman costume on for you in the, in the boudoir? Uh, and she said, once the filming was over, she never wanted to put it on or see it ever again. Uh, so she's, she's completely done. Uh, she went through 60 cat suits. I don't blame her. Cause that sounds exactly like how I felt when I put on my dress pants for the first time after the pandemic. <laughs> dress pants. What are those? <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah, she went through 60 cat suits, uh, in the six month. They were a thousand bucks a piece. Uh, and the, and the last thing that I looked up, apparently, uh, there's a whole bunch of big cities where at bus stops, they put, uh, like movie posters that had her like standing with the whip, holding the whip at the top and it's going around her, uh, in the cat suit. And, um, people kept breaking the plexiglass and stealing them. Um, so they literally (laughs) had to change it and put Danny DeVito on the, one of the, one of the character posters, uh, because the cops were like having to sit there and watch bus stops to see who it was. (laughs) Because they're so, so apparently the large scale posters, like the big ones that have Catwoman on them, are worth like thousands of dollars. Yeah, because there's only a <laughs> collectors' few of them. items. Yeah, because people were stealing them. So <laughs> that's I, that's all the uh, Catwoman stuff I had. Yeah, she she didn't she wasn't on my list. I don't think she did a bad job. I didn't like the performance, but I think she was told to do exactly what she did. It just I just it didn't make it didn't make sense to me. I uh, like her character didn't. Yeah, but she's got that. Maybe like maybe they know on Wikipedia that uh, she's not a superhero and she's a super whore and all she has is partners that were lovers. Uh, and she played that part pretty well in the Catwoman thing. She played it pretty well, but like if you're listing Michelle Pfeiffer's like best acting performances, no, no. are you going to put this on the no, list? Because no, no. I would. No, no. Because I think about Michelle Pfeiffer from like One Fine Day, and I'm like, she's really good in that movie, and she's really good in other stuff that I've seen her in. I didn't think she was really good in this. I thought she was okay. That was my that's my that's my favorite Michelle Pfeiffer movie, One Fine Day. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That movie's phenomenal, and she's great. Carrier Monkey. I just, <laughs> I just like, um, I, I dude, I liked her in this. I thought it was good, and I don't know if it was just I like I liked her in the cat suit. Maybe, yeah, uh, maybe I was booty but, blind. I don't know. I thought that's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, Michael Keaton is my next one. He's just, he's good, man. He's way good. He's on my list, too. Uh, we're going to list favorite Batman later. Spoiler alert. He's my favorite Bruce Wayne. He's not my favorite Batman, but he's my favorite Bruce Wayne. He's definitely my favorite Bruce Wayne, also. He's just, a, he's supernatural. He's not trying real hard. I believe that he's, like, a rich guy. He has, like, the real thin, like, wire-rimmed glasses that he wears. Dude, and they were, like, octagon-shaped in this movie. They were, like, yeah. weird-looking. I liked it. And, dude, he like, when he's hanging out at Wayne Manor, his fireplace is, like, five fireplaces wide he's got like whole trees in there burning with just him and uh, alfred he's wearing dude he's we- he's wearing like a freaking he's like wearing a full button down with a sweater over the top of it with like an ascot underneath it and he's just hanging out at the house because that's what you do wearing when you're so rich. much so much clothes yeah uh, speaking of which that uh, that sitting that close to the fire must have been super hot on top of that yeah um that tv was wicked close to that fireplace <laughs> yeah. The TV was sitting right outside the fireplace on like a little rolling stand, and I was like, "That TV's gonna melt." Like, there's no because yeah, his little his little substitute teacher uh, rolling stand. It's like, <laughs> oh, your teacher's sick. Let's roll wheel in the cart. We're gonna watch a video dude, today, dude. I've been next to fires that hot. And I don't. It's way too hot to like. You know how it's, like, it's burning your face, and you gotta like turn away. Yeah, that's yeah. Like, do they just not have heat on in there, and it's heating the whole house? Yeah, that's from is that like Beauty and the Beast Castle where it's only fireplaces? There's no central heat. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but Michael Keaton's one of my favorite characters. Yeah, Mike, dude, he's really good. When, like when he goes to Alfred and he's trying to tell Alfred what to say to Selena Kyle. Yeah. And he's like, I tell her that. Uh, no, wait, don't tell her that. Uh, tell, and he's like trying to think. Like that's that's the Michael Keaton I love. I can't wait for multiplicity. Yeah. Oh, God, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait for that either. <laughs> oh, man, Michael Keaton. Yeah. Uh, 220, 221, whatever it whatever takes. Whatever it takes. He's the freaking best. 
And then my third is just purely because I just was excited to see him is uh, Andrew Brynjarski as Chip Shrek. Chip uh, Shrek. Latimer from the program, whatever his name is in Necessary Roughness. Just whenever I see that guy's big block head, I just get so excited. Wyatt is his name. In, uh, yeah, in, in Necessary, Necessary Roughness. Yeah. Freaking, I like that guy. He did nothing in the movie. He didn't need to be there, but I was so excited when I saw him. He doesn't need to be there because his dad didn't need to be there, but... None of them needed to be. Yeah, there. exactly. Uh, my third dude, my third one was Danny DeVito. I always love Danny nice. DeVito. I want him to read every children's book on audio before he dies. That way, like, yeah, imagine like every time I like my daughter loves Lorax, and every time he's like talking, I'm like, golly, what a perfect friggin' voice for acting. And dude, what's the what's the Danny DeVito movie that we'll get in a couple years? Uh, Renaissance Man. Renaissance Man. Double D. Whoop. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for that movie. I love yeah, that movie. Yeah, that movie is awesome. Uh, but yeah, I put uh, Danny DeVito on there uh, just because I really, I know he did it over the top and I know that's what you didn't like, but I, I like that character. I thought. I mean, I know he was supposed to do it over the top. I, I, I think that he was doing exactly what Tim Burton was telling him to do. I just, for whatever reason, I just didn't buy the like vision that Tim Burton had. I just didn't, I missed it somehow. I don't know what I was missing or how to get it. But like when I watch Beetlejuice or when I watch Edward Scissorhands or even the first Batman, Tim Burton Batman movie, I'm totally in. Yeah. I believe everything. I love all the stuff that's happening. Right. I have almost no complaints. But this one, for whatever reason, I just was like, I just didn't like, that didn't make sense. And why is that guy there? And like, how does she get special powers from falling out a window? Right. Like the, right. Like for oh, for whatever reason, I just I just couldn't do it. Well, I liked I liked um, whatever it's called when fingers are like fused together. S- yeah, synodactyl or something. So it starts with an S. I can't remember. Yeah, it does. I can't pronounce it. Um, I can't remember what it's called. But I, I like that whole flipper thing and the nose and the teeth and just the whole like in his mouth. How he had he he said it was uh, like this really mild mouthwash with red and green food coloring in it. And he said I would just take nice. a small amount of it and swish it around my mouth right before I would start talking in every scene. So that way, when he really got going and spit would come out, it would be that green stuff. Yeah, he came. was he was drooling a lot. Yeah, that was on purpose. Uh, he, was, he said that it took like four and a half hours to get into makeup, and then by the end of the show, shoot they were able to get it down to like three hours nice yeah they said they put like a laser disc player in there uh laser disc for all you kids at home <laughs> are like a cd but it's the size of a uh, an lp record it's huge um right so they put a laser disc and a record is the thing that plays music uh but it's the size of like a dinner plate that's even bigger <laughs> a dinner plate is those things that you don't get um at, at, at the fast food they restaurants. don't give them at fast food restaurants <laughs> Uh, yeah, those are the three best characters. All right, what you got for, you got, um, director? Writer, director, actor, background stuff. So the writer, Daniel Waters, um, he wrote Heathers, he wrote Hudson Hawk, he wrote Demolition Man. Oh, man. Um, this guy has won multiple Razzies for screenplays. (laughs) Like, he's only got about five credits, and two of them have gotten the worst screenplay of the year awards. Which one were those? Hudson Hawk was one of them. Yeah, I I could see. And I think the other one I didn't write down. Oh, that's all right. He also, according to his picture on Wikipedia, has one of the all-time gnarliest comb-overs in <laughs> recorded history. Oh man! Like you, that poor guy. Like, dude, I'm telling. <laughs> like, look it up right now, Daniel Waters on Wikipedia, and click on his picture. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, Demolition Man is an excellent movie. He's one of three writers on that. Uh, Hudson Hawk, I really like, but it's so dumb. Yeah, it's super dumb. I, dude, I, I, all the movies you listed, Heather's, I like all of those. I like all of those. Yeah. Uh, I have nothing, no problem with him. Tim Burton, the director, is a huge deal. He's a huge director. He has been since the late 80s. He still is. Uh, he directed Beetlejuice, Edward Scissorhands, Ed Wood, these two Batman movies, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Alice in Wonderland. Um, he produced, wrote, or created like stuff like Nightmare Before Christmas, Mars Attacks. Uh, he's just done a million things, and it, all of it is very distinctly Tim Burton. Yeah, Pee Wee's Pee Wee's Big Adventure, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, uh, Big Fish, Sleepy Hollow. Yeah, yeah, he has like such a like such a distinctive directorial style or producerial style that if you see a movie, you just go like, "That's Tim Burton." Uh, that's live action lollipops that look like they've gone insane. This is Tim Burton. Yeah, is he going to direct the new Beetlejuice? There's another Beetlejuice coming out. I'm not sure. I think I, know, I think he's involved, but I don't know if he's going to direct or not. Uh, it's Michael Keaton again, and it's uh, Winona Ryder again. So that's good. Yeah, well, that's the other thing with Tim Burton, right, is he always uses his, like, regular kind of Tim Burton featured players. Like, it's kind of surprising that neither of his Batman movies had Depp or Winona Ryder. Right. Or, um, damn, uh, the chick with three names? Golly, I can't think of her name now. 
Yeah, Helena Bonham Carter. I think was uh, he might have been married to her for a minute, or that was his like girlfriend. Yeah, possibly. His I know his wife's in Mars Attacks. She's the one that um, comes like sliding up. Martin, Mars Attacks I really like. Um, Burton has won an Emmy and a Golden Globe. He's been nominated for multiple Oscars, multiple BAFTAs, but he has not won. So like, he's he's made a ton of money. He's made a bunch of really good movies. He's really well known. Yeah, everybody knows Tim Burton. Everybody who likes movies who's our age probably knows who Tim Burton is. But I think like regular people don't know who that. I don't think my parents know who Tim Burton is. <laughs> I bet I bet my parents do. I bet my parents do, and I bet my students do. I'm going to ask them when we go back to school. There's there's no chance that your students. Know. Yeah, I'm going to ask. We'll see. Like they don't know. They know nothing. They don't know who Dan Aykroyd is. Like, yeah, they don't. It's really sad. Oh, uh, one other thing that I did find, uh, just bonus good stuff. Yeah. Penguin in the DC animated universe was voiced by our old friend David Ogden Styers. Nice, Cogsworth. Yeah. yeah, Cogsworth, who was in two of our 1991 movies, yeah. uh, Doc Hollywood, Hollywood is the mayor, and Cogsworth in Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, that's awesome. But he's got he's got an incredible voice, so I was like, oh, that's awesome. Or had, right? Had him. an incredible voice? Had, yeah, yeah had. he's, yes. Yeah, it's not as good some more now that he's dead. I got um, I got a couple of extra goods, if we can if we can say it. Yeah, hit it. The one thing is when um, Catwoman and Batman are fighting, uh, and he hits her. And she's on the ground and she's like, how could you? I'm a woman. And he's like, I'm sorry. I just, I, and then she hits him back. All I could think of was every time we would start wrestling, I would pretend like, oh God, something's in my eye. And then you would stop and I would light you up. As soon as that happened, I was like, oh, cool. I'm Michelle Pfeiffer in this one. That's great. (laughs) Dude, I knew you were going to say that because I had that exact same thought. Dude, any, like. Anytime we would wrestle in high school, there were inevitably, anytime I got the other hand, dude, hold on, stop, stop. No, no, for real, serious. I swear to God, I swear to God, I got something in my eye. And I'd be like, okay, hang on. And as soon as I let up, you would freaking body slam me. I was like, damn it, again, every time. Yeah, um, I uh, Never did you not do it, and never did I not stop to make sure that you were okay. Towards the end, though, I had to really play it up. I'd be like, no, dude, for real, just <laughs> let go of me. I'm hurt. Hang on, it's right. And then I would just light you up. <laughs> Uh, good old rock, nothing beats that. <laughs> uh, the other thing I was thinking of is how many, uh, first of all, Max Shrek, uh, that name um, is the name of the actor that plays uh, Count Orlock on Nosferatu, a movie from yeah. 20, 1922, uh, a German yeah. movie during the Weimar Republic. Uh, on top of that, uh, Penguin is dressed like the guy, like when he's fully dressed and all the way up, like, like almost like the penguin from the comics, like with yeah. with the like six piece suit and the freaking ascot and the the yeah, and he's got like spats on his shoes right, right. and like the little the, cigarette the top holder. hat, cigarette holder, all that stuff. Um, that's all uh, straight from Doctor the Cabinet of uh, Doctor Kilgari, uh, Kiligari. Um, that's from 1920, also a German movie. Both of those movies are really big as far as like um, moving motion pictures forward. Uh, and then yeah. there's a part where. Um, Christopher Walken says something like, uh, maybe we can make a, like a Reichstag fire. Um, that is what the Nazis did. Like the, you know, the Weimar Republic stopped in like whatever, 33. So like that whole, that whole build up to world war two, the Nazis were the ones everybody assumes that started that fire that, you know, put them in power. Um, that whole, like, there's a lot of German references, or Weimar. Yeah, there's like some like real like subtle like Nazi symbolism right. or like maybe not Nazi, but like right. pre-World War II German. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that's the history teacher in me, but I just, I, I heard Reichstag fire and I, I was like, Max Shrek, Maximilian Shrek sounds familiar. And that's from my um, <laughs> film history class that I took as an elective. Um, yeah. But that, that's, that's the extra. Yeah, no, I saw that. That's, I think that's super cool. Uh, the only other thing that I had, we already talked about the Danny Elfman score is incredible. Way good. Way, way good. Uh, best Batman. Um, who, you go first. Who's your best? Let's do best Bruce Wayne and best Batman. Okay. My, my best Bruce Wayne is the same as yours. It's Michael Keaton. Um, yeah. My, I mean, my second uh, best is Christian Bale, but those are so different. Like, yeah. Second best Bruce Wayne is Christian. Se- sorry. Bale. Second, second best Bruce Wayne. Sorry. We're doing Bruce Wayne. 
Second best Bruce Wayne is Christian Bale. I think my second best Bruce Wayne would be Ben Affleck. I thought he was a good Bruce Wayne. Uh, yeah, the old Bruce Wayne. I, I feel that. He was, yeah, was kind of old. He was my fourth. Like he kind of didn't give a shit. He was fourth. I put Adam West up there for number three. I wanted to get Adam West in there, but I just didn't remember that TV show well enough to like be able to even rank it. So I put, like I have the 66, 1966 Batman uh, movie, yeah. and it's super cheesy. But I really liked, like, I liked how he was. Yeah. Um, so I put, I put Adam West as three. So it goes Michael Keaton, nice. Adam West, then Christian Bale. Ben Affleck was four and then, uh, Val Kilmer was five, but Val Kilmer was only five because I like Val Kilmer. So and I stopped, oh, and yeah. I stopped at five. Um, this is the thing. Can I put like Kevin Conroy? I wanted to put him in there. That's the guy who voices Batman on, uh, Batman, the animated series. I didn't know if I was allowed to do that. I didn't know if I could do that. Dude, I think so. So, like, so Bruce Wayne, like, let's, so you've got one through five. Right. I've got, I've got Michael Keaton yeah. and then Ben Affleck. And then probably, I guess, Christian Bale after that. I don't know where to put Adam West. I didn't, I don't remember him. I didn't love Robert Pattinson as Bruce Wayne. So I don't really have right. any other rankings there. But, dude, if you have an animated Batman that you want to put in there, because, dude, I, like. Kevin Conroy, he is the voice of Batman to me. That's fine. I don't, I haven't seen that stuff as much. Yeah. I really like Will Arnett's Batman. Yeah, it's good. It is good. Like his Lego Batman voice. Yeah, it is. Like he's not he's not number one, but I pro- I probably put him you know three four. Yeah, yeah. Like my number one bat my favorite Batman is Christian Bale. Yeah, he's the best. He's the because it's like you said it's like gritty. It's like real. Like they tell you why. Like he goes to um, Morgan Freeman, whatever, Mister Fox, and he like gets all of the stuff and he shows like how it works, and then you can believe like hey he doesn't have powers, but he's freaking good. Yeah, it's really gritty. I like, I mean, he's got the best origin story of all the Batman. Like, they show everything. He's in the mountains, learn how to fight while he's standing on ice. I love, I fucking love that shit. Or on those posts. He's fighting Liam Neeson's. Liam Neeson's is obviously my shit. The incomparable Liam Neeson's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he, dude, he's so, he's such a, he's such a real, legit Batman. He is. So he's my favorite Batman. He is also my favorite. Well, who's your number two? I think number two would maybe be Will Arnett. And I think number three might be Pattinson. I thought he was really good as Batman. Pattinson was my number three. I had Kevin. This is where I put Kevin Conroy in Batman's voice. Uh, but Robert, yeah. pa- Robert Pattinson, I thought, I don't even really, thinking back to the movie, I don't even really remember him playing Bruce Wayne that much. It just seemed like it was always Batman. Even when he was he in the- He barely did. I'm, he's in the cave and he took his thing off and he had the yeah. eye black around his eyes and he was like looking at stuff in the cave. Like I, I don't remember him being Bruce Wayne, Bruce Wayne. I know he really, he really didn't because you know, in that movie, I, you know, I liked it. I think there's some stuff they could have done better, but I hope they'll do another one because I, I thought it was there was a lot of promise. Yeah, yeah, I like, I like the detective uh, side of it. But yeah, dude, I'm totally down with an animated Batman voice because, I mean, dude, honestly, like if we were gonna rank Jokers, like Heath Ledger's number one, but Mark Hamill is number two. Yeah, it's close. It's close too because Mark Hamill kills it. Like some of the, some there's so much like you said, there's so much Batman animated stuff. There's some incredible voice work in those in those. Series. If you heard Kevin Conroy do Batman, you would go, "Oh yeah, all right, yeah, that's the one. That's that's Batman's yeah. voice." Yeah, I have heard it. I just can't. Th- I, I haven't watched enough of it to like rank it. That, that's where I put him. That's where I put all those guys. Cool. All right. Uh, let's get to the worst. What's your worst? What's your first worst? Um, all right. So worst scene. I just, I didn't have a worst scene really or character. I just said Max Shrek is not needed. No. That whole storyline didn't be, need to be there. It didn't, it didn't at all. I mean, he, he could have been there as like, uh, what's her name's boss, but that's all. Like yeah. it didn't need to be, he pushes her out the window and then we never see him again. He didn't need to be a key driver of this correct, story. Correct. Like, cause like in, in Batman Begins, not Batman Returns, this movie, Batman Begins, Christian Bale. Remember there's like the mobster Carmine Falcone. Right. Yeah. Like he just, he did some stuff, but he didn't do a lot of stuff. Right. Like he, it could have been that. Right. Like, oh, he's a bad guy that he's like a, he's like an ancillary bad guy. Yeah. That's going to push things forward a little bit, but we're not going to spend a ton of time. Right. He's that. just the, the catalyst to move the story forward. Right. Yeah. Uh, my first worst scene is just the very first scene of the movie. Um, Penguin's parents, Oswald Cobblepot's parents. They just like, I guess, He's just an ugly baby, and so they just take his freaking bassinet and throw him into a river? Is that this? Like, rich people, if the kid's ugly, they just throw him into a river? Yeah, Paul Rubens is not having any of that shit. He's just tossing it right into the right into the river. Yeah, like, that was how the movie started. I was like, all right. Like that, I, I mean, I don't know if we're going to see these people again, but they suck. Yeah. So it's just like, oh, this kid's weird looking. Yeah. Out he goes. Yeah, and he, like, they put him in a cage, 
And then he then he grabs the cat. Is that what it was? The cat? Yeah. Yeah. Grabs the cat and like does kills it, I, I guess. I don't know. Um that was but that was that was Paul Rubens. That was Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> yeah, it was. Playing playing his dad. Um Do you know what his dad's name is, by the way? Tucker Cobblepot. Tucker Cobblepot. And then uh and and then Esther Cobblepot. Esther, yeah. His mom. Yeah, yeah. And then again in that same in that same cold open before the titles hit, like we get the ugly baby, he's in a cage, his parents throw him into a river, and then it then it fades out and it fades in and says thirty three years later. We're like ninety seconds into the movie and I go, Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Cause I know Danny DeVito, I know what he's gonna look like. Am I I'm supposed to believe that he's thirty three? How old is he in this? Forty six. He's 48. 48, yeah. And he's not made up to look as though he's had a real good go of it. They make right. him look even older and even scarier. So like, why why did they, why was it 30, why was it 33? Is that like a Batman canon thing that Penguin is really 33 years old? That was. No, I have no idea. Is there some symbolism behind the number 33? Why could it not be just 30? Like, I, yeah, I don't know why 33. I totally agree. The whole thirty-three years later, I was mad, uh, and that might have been one. That might have been one of the things that made this movie tough for me because, like, before it even started, before the title even hit the screen, I was like, "What? Thirty-three? How?" Yeah. Speaking of which, his dad, the guy who played Penguin on the '66 Batman, that was going to be his father, Burgess Meredith, but he got sick. Yeah. He couldn't. He couldn't do it, so they got uh, Pee Wee instead. Nice. Oh, I like Burgess Mer- Meredith. That would have been cool. Yeah. Although I was happy to see Pee Wee in there to uh, wearing his monocle, doing his thing, throwing his baby into a river. Yeah, with the with the cigarette holder thing. With the, yeah. <laughs> um, next, we already talked about ninety two Michelle Pfeiffer. She wears glasses. She has frizzy hair. Suddenly, she's not hot anymore. I don't get smoking uh, hot. It's like killer. That's that was absolutely. She's all that. It's like, oh no, she's wearing overalls. No one knows that she's actually really hot. Yeah. It's like, no, we all. Everyone knows. Uh, on top of that, I did. Uh, we already kind of talked about how like it wasn't filmed in real locations. Uh, but you never really saw the sky or the skyline. And when it was, it was like a matte painting and you could kind of tell. So like everything seemed like close then, like closed in and close. And I, like even yeah. the tree lighting ceremony, which was like in a big ass city, like Gotham City, there should have been more people there. And there's like, I don't know, a hundred people there. Uh, it just seemed like everything, it reminded me of like Whoville on the, like the uh, Grinch movies and stuff. Like I just... I don't know. I wish it wasn't um, all sets. But that's part of the Tim Burton experience. Like it's it's like a really expensive Broadway play. Like everything is a set. There's no exteriors. Like there's no real locations. It's all s- sets and sound stages with matte paintings. Even the exterior stuff. Yeah. I just I don't know. It's just like and when it works, I think that's actually that's part of the like experience. It's like because everything looks a little weird. Like your brain kind of knows like I, this is not a place that actually exists. Right. And all dude, it was like um, like the Olmecs, the people from uh, Mesoamerica, the like the oldest yeah. one, and they have those big giant uh, carved heads. There was there yeah. was like faces on all the buildings, like big, huge. Yeah, there are a lot of those. And all of the guys like holding the thing, like holding the gear shifter, like those looking things. That's all from like Doctor Kilgari and like all of the like um, uh, Metropolis, all those old movie sets. That's what that looks like too, from that. So like I, I like that, but it just seemed like everything was. And then like I read like fifty percent of the lot was taken up with Gotham, Gotham City sets, and they were all like movable because. They needed to be able to move those to put other sets so people could film other things right. and how Michelle Pfeiffer kept getting lost. And uh, I mean, I like how he does it the old school way, the whole like indoor soundstage and like, I like that, but man, I don't know. Yeah, no, there's a lot of stuff that I liked that he's done before that he did here and and here for whatever reason, it just didn't work. And probably if I knew more about movies, maybe I could explain yeah. why I thought it didn't work. I can't, yeah. I just, I just didn't feel yeah. like. Because I had that too. It's like everything is clearly on a soundstage. It's very Tim Burton-y to do that. But I just didn't, it, I just, for whatever reason, I just didn't, I didn't get immersed into it the way that I have in other Tim Burton movies. Agreed. Um, also, the Penguin's like uh, umbrella helicopter, <laughs> the umbrella copter. Umbrella copter. Uh, that's impossible. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't. Like I, I don't know, like that. movie physics are always a little bit iffy, but like this, the umbrella copter is even less possible than like Iron Man's suit. There's just no world that we live in where that physically is possible. I don't, dude, I don't, um, I don't even understand. Like when he left on the helicopter, I was like, he didn't even commit a crime yet. Why the hell is he running from Batman? <laughs> like he was just like, I saw her first. And then he like 
opens his umbrella and it takes off. And I was like, why the hell is he running away? He didn't do anything yet. Batman's not going to kill him. Well, also, Batman doesn't kill anybody. That's one of the whole things with Batman. But also, like... But does he, though? Remember the big guy? He put a, a friggin' dynamite with a, a clock on it in the guy's pants and threw him in a hole, and it exploded. I'm pretty sure that guy's dead. <laughs> I think I probably died. <laughs> but yeah, one of the, like, big Batman things in the comic is he doesn't kill people. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, agreed. But yeah, that, that guy, he did stick a bunch of uh, dynamite down his pants and then push him, into, push him down a basement. And he gave him that... Like wry smile right after he put it in there and he shoved him, <laughs> punched him, and pushed him in there. Uh, he's definitely dead. I mean, he could be okay. Well, no, probably well, not now. But probably not now. <laughs> he was a really nice guy. I really liked him a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> but like in the first movie, he's fighting Jack Nicholson and Jack Nicholson falls into the chemicals. That's not Batman's fault. He was just trying to defend himself and the guy fell into a <laughs> vat of chemicals. <laughs> Sure, Zimmerman, we got it. Stand your ground. <laughs> I understand. They were coming right for us. But no, like uh, like he, Batman's, uh, uh, Michael Keaton said, Penguin comes out of nowhere. He's on TV. He fake rescues the mayor's baby. And then Batman immediately goes like, oh, that guy's in charge of the red whatever, red crime wave syndicate. Yeah, whatever it's like, called. I don't, and no, they never explained to us how he made that connection. They never even mentioned that that word, whatever the name of the gang was before or after. They, don't, they just need to spell it out for you. They just need a big can that says gas on it that says <laughs> Red Crime Syndicate or whatever it's called. They just need some radioactive cats. <laughs> uh, but no, there just was some stuff like that where I was like, why is Batman mad at Penguin? And why is Max Shrek like partnering with him? And why is yeah. Catwoman have superpowers? Like there's a lot of like stuff that I don't know any. I dude, understand. I, look, why does Batman reach in, have to reach into uh, an aquarium? And pull his sleeve up past his elbow to even get into the Batcave through the Iron Maiden. I hate getting my arm wet like that. <laughs> That's why he does it, because nobody's going nobody's gonna to stick their hand into your aquarium. Yeah. That's way better than the Christian Bale Batman where you have to punch the keys on the, on the grand piano in the exact right order. It seems like anybody could do that accidentally, like in Goonies. <laughs> if you hit the wrong note, we'll all be flat. <laughs> yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't, um, yeah, agreed. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't. I don't like the reach into the aquarium. If something if something <laughs> falls in the pool and I'm not swimming in the pool, that's where she's buried. I'm not getting it out until <laughs> I go in the pool again. We started feeding Wolf uh, solid food. Yeah. And so it's freaking jam hands all day, every day for him and me. <laughs> and I'm, I'm washing like 30 dish towels a day because I just like, I've got like one on each pocket. You got to keep him on you. Mine was over my shoulder. Dude, constantly. he's got like. He's got freaking yogurt like up to his elbows and all over his face and in his hair and on his feet and all over the ground and the dog. Yeah. And I hate it. Jam hands is definitely a thing. Wait till he starts touching your, the windows of your car. <laughs> My kid touches the inside window of the car and I want to murder her. <laughs> and then like when she's mad, she knows and she'll go like this and wipe snot and then touch the inside of the car window. And I swear, Cat was like, dad's going to kill you and I'm not going to be able to stop him. I, dude, I, I hate it so much. <laughs> dude, I just love the visual of your daughter just looking you dead in the eye, wiping snot off her face and smashing it on your window. Like, what about that? She doesn't even break eye contact either. She's like, <laughs> yeah. And just does it. I freaking hate it. Oh, what a fucking psycho. She is, a, <laughs> dude, she is such a terrorist. I'm not even joking. All right. That's awesome. Um, any more worst? I got no. I got no more worst. Effects the Batmobile armoring in this movie is you can tell it's CGI. I actually liked it. I thought it was really cool. That was the first time it was CGI. And dude, I can tell it was um yeah. for some reason, even the CGI reminded me of CGI from like a um like a uh like another Tim Burton movie. Like maybe stop motion from Beetlejuice or something. It reminded me of something. I thought it looked a lot like the kind of like liquid CGI from T2. Uh kinda. Because it was like it was like kind of shiny when it was happening. I was like, that looks like the like computerized like metal Terminator CGI. Even though I looked it up and ILM didn't do any work on this movie. Was, dude, something about it reminded me of maybe like how jerky it was. I don't know what it was. Something reminded me of the way Tim Burton does his stop motion effects with a lot of the movies he does. Yeah, and I also I found a little like one minute like interview with one of the CGI artists, yeah. uh, a visual effects artist from this movie, and they said this was the first movie ever that digitally generated creatures that actually exist. Oh, nice. So like, it wasn't like, it wasn't Penguins. like Terminator or Clash the Penguins, of the Titans yeah. or whatever. 
Well, it, it, I think they might have done some stuff with the penguins, like the big wide shots from overhead where there was a million of them on the alleyways. Yeah. But he specifically mentioned the bats. Oh, yeah. The like bats, when they fly definitely. out of the Christmas tree and stuff, he's like, we have bats. Those really exist, but we, we CGI'd them in this movie. That was the first time that had ever been done. But yeah, I didn't have any like bad effects. I actually thought the effects in this were really cool. Yeah, I, I was reading about how the penguins, they had some real penguins with stuff on their yeah. back and like the swimming penguins yeah. were those. There was CGI when the aerial shot of the thing, you could tell the the water moving right. was CGI. Uh, but like they had real penguins. They had people in like um, plastic suits, like leaning back and forth, walking with next to the penguins. And then they had CGI. It's called like, a, I don't know, I think it's called flocking. When you put like so many people and you space them out and then you fill the people in with CGI people, and yeah. make them do what the other people are doing. Um, and that's how they did a lot of those, a, a bunch of penguin shots. They do that with like, like if there's like, it's like a football movie and they show the stadium, there's like right. 25 real people and then it's a bunch of CGI people like interspersed with them. Yeah, yeah. That's, and when you said they did things that actually exist, all that's the first thing I thought of was the flocking from the, from the penguins. Yeah, so I thought that was all cool. Yeah, I didn't have any bad effects. I thought the effects were actually really, were really good for this movie. Yeah, I liked them. I liked them fine. Old tech. There's a ton. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. I didn't I didn't even um, write them all down. Cool. All right, next up. Hi, I'm Troy McClure. <laughs> you may remember me from such nature films as Earwigs, Ooh, and Man vs. Nature, The Road to Victory. <laughs> the Road to Victory. Um, cameos, I got three. One is uh, is the, uh, the Voters Like Fingers. Uh, that's Jan Hooks, yeah. who is... Uh, who plays Verna in 30 Rock, Jenna's mom. Yes. Holy crap, yes. Nice. And she's she is a, such a badass comedian who is freaking hilarious. Yeah, so good stuff. I was super excited to see her. I knew I saw her from somewhere. I just couldn't remember where I had seen her. 30 Rock is definitely one of the it places. It took me a long time to figure out who she was because she's because she's so good as Verna yeah. in 30 Rock. But yes, nice. that's her. Um the other one is the guy who plays uh, the organ grinder in Penguins, like, Army. Vince! Vince. Vincent Chiavelli. Get off my train! That guy. Get off my train. He's been in a million things. He was in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Subway Ghost, and Ghost. Yeah. Great value, Jeff Van Gundy. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, every time I see Jeff yeah. Van Gundy, I'm like, get off my train. <laughs> Yeah, so he's a, he's a really good, like, oh, that guy's been in a million things. And then the one that you and I both had is the paper boy from the beginning of the film who's handing out newspapers. He's got a really recognizable face. He's kind of weird looking. Yeah. And I was like, oh, dude, I know that kid. He's been in a ton of stuff. Yeah. His name's Sean Whalen. Nice. Eat my shorts, Kent. Yeah. <laughs> you remembered him from that thing you do, yeah. but he was also in Waterworld. He was in Twister. He was Twister. in Men in Black. He was in Friends. He was in Just Shoot Me. He's in, like, he's still working. He has like three things coming out in 2022. Like he's done a ton of stuff. That's awesome. But dude, the thing that he is most known for that you will remember that I definitely remembered is a Got Milk commercial. Yeah, I remember. That's, I do. Where the radio station calls in to ask who shot Daniel. Oh, uh, no. Oh, no. Who shot Daniel Boone. And he works <laughs> Not in Daniel he Boone. works. <laughs> He works in an Alexander Hamilton. Alexander Hamilton. That's his. Alexander Hamilton. Ask who shot Alexander Hamilton. Right, right. He works in an Alexander Hamilton museum, and he's eating a peanut butter sandwich, and he's going. He can't say Aaron Burr. That's friggin' sweet. I, dude, I, I got it. I downloaded it here. I'll hang on. And now let's make that random call with today's $10,000 question. It's a tough one. Who shot Alexander Hamilton in that famous duel? Hello for $10,000. Who shot? Excuse me? Let me drink some milk. Let me drink some milk. I'm afraid your time is almost up. I'm sorry. Maybe next time. Amazing. Yeah, that's totally. That's, I totally remember that. Got milk. Got, Got milk. milk. Dude, I, I remembered that commercial immediately. And when I watched it, I was laughing. It was it was a huge ad campaign. It ran for a long time. And that commercial ran for a really long time because it was freaking hilarious. Yeah. And also, uh, I don't understand the whole gut milk. Why did the milk, why were they pushing milk so much? I don't know why Big Milk was so heavy on that advertising, but uh, there was a, dude, remember it was like in magazines, yeah, TV. I remember. It was everywhere for years and years. 
Uh, guess what? Uh, no, I'm not. No, I don't like it. No, I'm not having milk's it. gross. But um, like the, the little kid <laughs> who's like, you might not talk to me now, but just wait. I'm drinking milk and I'm going to get older and stronger <laughs> and I'm going to have big muscles and then you'll want to hook up with me. Like it's it's it was weird, but totally stuff I remember. That thing you do though, man. We came here to dance and meet <laughs> girls, and we can't meet girls if we don't dance. When are you gonna play that thing you do? Has our fame preceded us? <laughs> our fan. We have a fan, and he wants to <laughs> our fan. <laughs> Make a mo- lot of money off you, O'Neaters. Uh, it's pronounced on netters. <laughs> uh, it's the O'Neaters. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I put I put Paul Rubens, uh, Pee Wee Herman. I put uh, Andrew yeah. Bernarski, 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 uh, Vincent Chiavelli, and um, Sh- now I know his name is Sean. Sean Whalen. Whalen. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, a lot of great cameos in this movie. All right, cool. Five questions. Is it okay for kids? What age? Jesus Christ, no. It was way too many sexual no. innuendos, and <laughs> I just no. I I put thirteen. No. Thirteen is the earliest. Yeah. It's PG-13, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. But still, like, yeah. sometimes it's PG-13. You're still like, I don't want to sit in the room while my kid watches it. Just let him watch it on his <laughs> yeah. own so he can learn about that stuff. I don't know. I just, no, I, I put 13. Um, would this movie get made? Yeah, they just made another Batman. They make one every two years. Yeah. Obviously, they're making all the Batman. I like it. Keep, and by the way, coming. that's not a complaint. Make all the Batman you want. All of them. I can always not watch them. It's fantastic. Bring it. Yeah, I've, I've never said, boy, I wish we had fewer Batman movies. Exactly. A uh, movie or TV show? It, yes. You either pick. Yes. Like, I mean, it, both. Yeah. Of course, both. Yes. Yes. Count me You're in. Right. Um, I haven't watched the Batman TV shows as much, but I'm sure as my kid gets older, we'll watch some. Dude, you're going to love the animated series. Uh, all right. Who, may, who If you remake it, did you come up with people? I didn't try to recast it because we've had like 11 Batman. Yeah, I know, like, but I, I want I want different Batman. I want I want a person of color to play Batman. And um, yeah, that I mean, that's going to be it's got to be right around the corner, right? I would hope so. I mean, we got we got Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman. So, yeah. yes. Uh, so I went with uh, Jamie Foxx because he's uh, a little older, uh, so he could play the old Batman. But I think he could still do action. And I think he could uh, play a, a billionaire philanthropist and also a kick ass Batman. There's not much you're going to tell me, Jamie Foxx. Could do that. I'd be like, Jamie Foxx can't do that. Jamie Foxx can do anything. Yeah, he, he can sing. Yeah. He can dance. He can act. Yeah. He's funny. Way funny. Like if he was wearing a freaking ascot and a sweater and some like octagonal wire rim glasses, I'd be like, yeah, I believe yep. it. Yeah. Is this TV close to the fireplace? Yep. That's that's Bruce Wayne. <laughs> uh, for Catwoman, it was a toss up. I wanted either um, Emily Blunt or Kiera yeah. or Kiera Knightley. Um, yeah, because both of them would be in the same, uh, not the same age as Jamie Foxx. They're in their thirties, but like, I think, uh, but like they're yeah. they're a little older, and I, I like that. Uh, and I want, uh, I like Emily Blunt. And Emily Blunt almost got got cast as Black Widow, so she was very oh, close nice. to being basically the Marvel cat Catwoman. Nice, yeah, I like Emily Blunt. She was awesome in um, Day Before Tomorrow. No, Tomorrow Never Comes. Edge of, Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. No, she's she's excellent. She can definitely do action. Um, and the movies where everyone's quiet, she's good in those too. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> I like that movie, both of them. Uh, yeah. Penguin. I don't know, dude. I wanted a person of color for this too. And I, Kevin Hart. No, he's the right size. No, I don't want Kevin Hart. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted it to be the other penguin that's not the deformed penguin, just the right, the the really smart businessman. Uh, and for some reason, because I've been watching um, the new version of Wonder Years, yeah. Dulé Hill. I don't know how to say his first name. Yeah, Dulé Hill. Dulé Hill, the guy from uh, Psych. Yeah, yeah. He, and from the West Wing. West Wing. Yeah, he's he's really good, dude. Dulé Hill's great. I want him to play the Penguin. Because at first yeah. I was like right. Michael Pena, because that guy's hysterical, and I think he yeah. I think he would be able to do <laughs> uh, a funny uh, Penguin that was also a, a smart businessman. But Dulé Hill is my answer. Yeah, man, that's awesome. I like that you're trying to make the Wiz version of this where. <laughs> He's on down. Get he's on, on down, down road. Uh, yeah, yeah, dude, I would love that. No. If it's Jamie Foxx and Dulé Hill, I'd be there on day one. But it doesn't have to be billed as a black bat. I mean, I know it's going to be. Just like the new live. No, no, it doesn't have to at all. That's the point is we can get to the point where you just cast the best actor, whether they're black or white or whatever, and then like everyone just goes and has a good time. Well, that's what you would think is going to happen with the new Little Mermaid movie, but uh, apparently Ariel's black and everybody's freaking out. <laughs> Oh my God, the mermaid's not white. What are they trying to indoctrinate our kids with? They're going to think mermaids are a different color. Yeah, mermaids. All right. <laughs> uh, can you still watch this movie in 2022? Uh, no, I excuse mean, yeah. me. Watch oh, and yeah, enjoy. Yes. 
I definitely can watch it. Watch and enjoy it a little bit. So I, I, I dude, I enjoyed. it. I was waiting for it to get better. I mean, I like all the people involved with this, but for whatever reason, I wasn't loving this. Uh, maybe I'll watch it again and see if I like it more. Yeah, I liked it. So, you know me, I gave it an eight. I, I was feeling it. I like Batman, dude. <laughs> I don't. I'm not. I'm not sad I about do it too. I love. I love Batman. I just didn't think there was that much Batman in this movie. Yeah, I'm not apologizing for my eight. You can suck it. I like it. Dude, I don't. You rank it wherever you want. You can give it a thirteen if you want. No, no, eight is what I got, and I'm sticking with it. Where is it? I rented it uh, on Amazon for a dollar ninety nine. I think you can also get it on YouTube for rent. It's on HBO Max streaming, but uh, we just canceled our HBO Max streaming like two days before I needed it. <laughs> I yeah, I like HBO Max. It's got a lot of jams on there lately. Yeah, I borrowed uh, borrowed this from the internet, a four K version. It was really good. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What else? Nothing else. What's the next movie? The next movie we're doing is The Player. And it's yeah, yeah. Next week is the player, uh, classic Robert Altman movie. Will be Goldberg, Bruce Willis, Tim Robbins. That neither Jeff or I have really ever seen. Yeah, so we're excited to check that out. Yeah, I'm excited. That way, it'd be a fresh take. It'd be super fresh. Um, I'm looking forward to that because it's supposed to be good, and I haven't seen it. Thanks for listening. Please feel free to join us on Discord. Email us. Leave us some feedback. Remember, research tells us that voters like fingers. Voters like fingers, and you spell it out: G A S C A N. <laughs> Gas can. Thanks for listening to Movie Life Crisis. Please subscribe, rate, and review. And remember, don't drive angry.